Welcome in everybody, Ty Bartell in with another edition of Coach's Corner. This time we are in the EBC with Salem Boys basketball coach Jeff Andres joining me today. Coach Andres, how we doing? Doing well, how are you? Uh, not too bad. Snow has fallen from the air. It's really starting to look like basketball season out there, Coach, and it's right around the corner. Let's talk a little bit about what you guys have been seeing in practices. I know football season went later as it usually does in Salem, uh, but that means you guys have a little bit shorter practice window. But what have you seen in the practice time that you've gotten? Yeah, we've got we got our guys back actually fairly quickly as they got uh, they lost football in the first round. So uh, we've kind of been at full strength strength after about a week or so, which is a little bit earlier than the last couple of years. But uh, just seeing a lot of good good competition going on. You know, we got a lot of. Uh, answers to uh, to figure out we, we we lost a lot of guys that played a lot of minutes for us last year so um some question marks that are out there that are being answered and uh, you know just seeing a lot of guys hustling and getting after it and, and and being very coachable so really pleased with how things have gone so far let's take it a step further and actually get to meet the team this year some of the maybe the returning faces and if there's some new faces we're gonna have to get accustomed to in the quaker community why don't we shout them out now yeah no doubt uh you know we don't have any returning uh, starters, all, all of those uh, graduated, but a couple key guys that we're looking for. We have four returning uh, Letterman and, and Caden Swiger, uh, senior guard. Um, Ross Davidson is a uh, junior guard. Lance Bailey is a junior guard. Cam Sampson's a junior guard, and uh, and Trent Fink is a junior guard. So you know those guys kind of round out probably our starting five going into it. Uh, looking for some act, uh, some, some some good. Uh, um, Good, good, good play from Colin Risen, who is a sophomore, six three sophomore, doing a lot of good things for us, uh, and Evan Jones, who's a six six uh, sophomore, uh, doing some good things for us as well. Uh, DJ Kozar and uh, Andre Portillo are a, a couple uh, seniors that are looking to get some playing time as well. So uh, those are some faces. Those are some new faces. You know, some guys that uh, have played a little bit in the past, um, but uh, looking for some big minutes from them this year. When you look at all of that, too, with these new faces that you do, you guys do bring in this year, I'm sure it's got to be exciting in the Salem community because that kind of it's like a mystery box. You don't know what you're going to get this year. But to kind of give us a preview of like what you're seeing and kind of sum it all up, what would you say the strengths of this team are that you guys are going to need to play to to get wins this season? Yeah, definitely. I mean, it, it is exciting to see, you know, these young guys because you're not real sure what they are going to do. But uh, we feel like we got some athleticism. You know, we're, we're pretty positionless in terms of, you know, guys that are interchangeable and and we don't really have a an extreme post player and an extreme point guard. We got a lot of guys that can play a lot of different positions. So our athleticism, I think, is a strength. Uh, we got some kids that can shoot. Um, you know, hopefully we can shoot it well on, on, on most nights. And, and if we feel like we can do that, uh, we'll be in good shape. And uh, they defend pretty well. They get after it. They, they hustle and, you know, some hard-nosed kids. So, like you said, kind of a mystery box, but, uh, you know, we'll see. And we're excited about the makeup of our team. This is also a very tough conference that you guys play in year in and year out. It's always a good basketball conference. And it looks to be the same this year. In in looking at the, the conference, the EBC conference as a whole, what are going to be some of the challenges inside the conference? And what are you guys going to need to do to have a good showing inside the conference this year? Um, you, know, you know, coming into it, as you said, there are some some good teams, some good quality players that are in the conference. Um, uh, they're going to create you know, extreme challenges for us. Uh, some of the some of the teams going in that we're, we're looking for um, to do good things, or at least, I guess, favorites going in, you know, Alliance, the returning league champion, has a lot of their pieces back. Um, so they're going to be a challenge, no doubt. Uh, their athleticism, their size, they seem to reload year after year. And they got a lot of good good kids back from last year's uh, championship run. Um, West Branch uh, is very deep, kind of like they are in football. You know, they have a, a great run going in football um, this year, but they, they have a lot of the same kids that are playing basketball for them at a high level. Um, and they're, they're very deep as well. Um, Carrollton has a lot of their kids back. They only graduated uh, one senior and, and, and uh, you know, the, the, the Rinkus kid plays for them, a point guard. He's very good. And, and Marlington has some good kids back too. I know they lost the, the Evanich kid, but they have, they have some good pieces as well. So it's very challenging night in, night out. I don't think there's any uh, night off in the league, um, especially on the road. It's a very tough league uh, to win in consistently and a very tough league to win it on the road. So, you know, we're going to have to do what we try to do. We're going to have to defend at a high level. We're going to have to hustle. We're going to have to out hustle people, uh, play hard. We have to make shots. Um, but, you know, we'll see how it goes. But, uh, you know, kind of flying under the radar a little bit this year. You know, last year we had some expectations going into it uh, coming off of a, 
uh, EBC co-championship. So, you know, you know, this year we kind of fly under the radar. So I don't know. I, I, I kind of like that role a little bit better, but we'll see how it goes. But definitely a challenging conference and uh, looking forward to it. OK, so those are the games you you have to play. Those ones are on the docket regardless. The non-conference ones are the ones that you guys have a little bit of choice in what you play. And you mentioned it's a young team. You mentioned some new starters, but it's a baptism by fire got kind of year in the non-conference once again for Salem basketball. What matchups are you excited for to kind of test these uh, younger guys to see what kind of stones they have in these? Yeah, I, t- I, t- I tell you what, it's it's uh, we, you know, looking at it, we, we sit down as a staff and as a team and kind of analyze a little bit the, the challenges that we do have coming up and. And it's uh, it's pretty it's pretty intense. You know, we, we, we got non-league games against, you know, Ursuline, Canfield, Gerard early in the season, uh, Springfield. We start off with Niles, who's going to be a, little, a much different team than they were. Um, Liverpool in the in, in the county is going to they're always good. They're very athletic and, and, and big and, and they seem to reload in this sport as well. Uh, South Range, we got Kit Cardinal Mooney on the uh, on, on the schedule again this year, who made a, a great run last year. Um, so those are all super, super uh, challenging games. So uh, we're really going to have to play well. and We're really going to have to play well often in order to compete night in, night out. Um, towards the end of the season, we have a couple of uh, county, county rivalries that we have going against United in some of those games. But uh, you know, we're going to have to be ready to play every night early in, in the middle and late in the season uh, to be able to, to, to get some Ws. So we'll see how it goes. But, um, yeah, we, we certainly didn't uh, – uh, take off in terms of uh, challenging the kids uh, every night. What's also interesting and how your schedule kind of shook out this year is that there's kind of a big stretch of road games sandwiched in between two stretches of home games. I mean, you you talk about you play the schedule that you get, but I mean, I got to figure this is going to be kind of beneficial for you guys to have that stretch of road games to test these guys, but you got the home games to kind of sandwich them in between. Yeah, you're absolutely right. We start off with three games on the road. And then we have four or five right in a row that we're at home. And then and then we go on the road again for, for for several. And then we end the season with a little bit of a home stretch. So I don't know. I don't know how that works out. You know, every year, you know, it is a little bit different with, with the way the contract goes. I, I kind of let the AD kind of uh, Matt Freeman deal with that. And, and, and whoever he can get on the schedule, um, we'll play. That's what I tell him. I said, we'll play anybody. We'll, you know, it doesn't really matter. Um, I'm not keeping track of my career record or anything like that. I'm not interested in that. I'm interested in having some fun and having, having these guys compete and the ability to compete and give them the opportunity to compete every night. So uh, it is who it is, you know, it is what it is and we will play who we play and, but it is kind of neat how it worked out where we have um, some, some road stretches followed by some home stretches. So it, we'll see how it plays out. Looking at this team too, with a bunch of new guys and new starting roles that have been filled out, what are you kind of looking at leadership wise and who's kind of established themselves as leaders in these practices going forward for this season? Yeah, a couple of guys that come to mind to me are, are uh, uh, Caden Swiger, who played, a, you know, played a lot of varsity basketball for us last year, uh, not necessarily in the starting role. And, and Ross Davidson, who, again, played a lot of varsity basketball for us. Both those kids have been instrumental in the success that the football team has had. Uh, they've been instrumental in some, some of the success that we've had. Uh, they are competitors. Um, you know, as, as competitive as kids you want to, you know, as anybody. And those guys have, have led by example. They've, they've been vocal leaders and, uh, you know, they, they've kind of uh, matured quite a bit over um, over the last year or, or two years. So we're looking for those guys to lead us. Uh, and, and some of the other guys that, uh, you know, Cam Sampson had some good moments last year for sure. So looking for some big things from him as well. And you look at all these guys coming back. It's a tough conference. It's a tough schedule. We're excited to see what you guys can uh, can bring to the table. I'm also curious, though, as far as your staff is concerned. We always like to meet the staff year in and year out, whether it changes, whether it stays the same. We know they're just as important to the program as well. So we'll give you the chance to shout them out. Maybe some other big names in the program as well. Yeah. Um, you know, staff, I think we have a very good staff. We have a lot of head coaching experience. Um between all of us, you know, and, and, and I'm, a, I'm a type of guy that likes to have uh, input. They give input and, and, and I take that input. We talk about, um, you know, collectively what what we need to do, what we're seeing and so forth. So it's certainly not a one man show. Uh, Coach Spac, who I have a, a tremendous amount of respect for. I played for back in the 90s, has been here. It's, it seems like forever. Both boys and girls program knows, knows more basketball than probably uh, most in the area. Um, he's he's going to assist us this year. Vince Natoli is also a varsity assistant who, who was the girls' head coach. He's kind of bounced all over the place, been in a lot of different programs, and it's always good uh, and interesting to hear his take on things because he's seen so much. 
Um, coach Mowry, uh, who's been here as well for quite a while. He was a head coach at United for a while, uh, but but then he's been here for for several years as our JV coach. Uh, very knowledgeable. Uh, real pleased to get him on uh, staff. He teaches here at the school now. Um, and then uh, Derek Frederick will be a new addition. He, he's been at the middle school level for us for a couple of years, but he's now at the freshman level. So uh, I think it's a solid staff, a lot of basketball knowledge. Uh, we get along pretty well. And, 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 it's, and like I said, uh, a little bit of a different take uh, from each one of those guys. You know, you don't want a bunch of yes, yes men in the locker room just no telling you how great everything's going. You, you, you want to talk about things. You want to try to figure things out. And you want uh, some different ideas. And I think we get that with the staff. So um, you know, looking forward to working with them and looking forward to see what we can do with this squad. Having all those kind of contrasting thought styles too, when you guys do come together and you agree on things, what is that one thing you agree on that gives players playing time outside of the skill level? Obviously, what are the things you're looking at player wise that give them playing time, give them a role on this team? Well, just being coachable, you know, as we break down film and we're seeing things, you know, uh, we're, we're going to do that tonight on our, we had a scrimmage last night. So we have some things that we, we, we want to work on and we, we want to look at and see how it went, uh, you know, kind of experimenting with some different things early on. That's kind of how it goes. And, you know, uh, you know, just for the guys to be coachable, you know, take what we're trying to get uh, them to do, uh, watch them as we're, as we're studying film, practicing things, different drills, and just looking for them to be coachable and, and, and uh, be able to, uh, you know, understand what we're trying to get them to do, but then also go out and do it. What's the kind of culture you wanted to, you want to set with this Salem team and in other words, when these guys have moved through, you had another crop of seniors just moved through when these right. guys move through, what do you hope that they say they took away from not only you, but this whole program? Well, you know, we want guys to play hard. You know, I think that's, that's kind of cliche, but everybody wants kids that want to come and play hard, you know, defend. And we want people to know that when they come to the cabs here in Salem, that they're going to be in for a battle. And, 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 and when we're on the road and coming to their place, you know, they're not going to have a night off. Uh, when Salem, when they're playing the Salem Quakers. And, and, and I think we've done that. You know, we haven't been necessarily, um, you know, a, a, a winning team in terms of record. But I, I do think that if you ask uh, coaches in our league and coaches in our area, our teams, um, that they, they feel like we play hard and we, and we get after it. And on any given night, we can we can beat you. Um, and, uh, you know, that's kind of what we want um, to be known about us. You have also a winning record as far as high character athletes that go through Salem's program. And I mean, they're not short of those at all. When you talk about having that many kind of just high character athletes, obviously you, the coaching staff, play some effect on that. What are some life lessons that you try to incorporate inside the sport of basketball that can kind of translate off the hardwood for these kids once they are out of high school? Yeah, I try to be a positive guy. Uh, I'm, I'm an optimist. I always have said that. I try to, you know, wake up each day and, and, and tell myself and have a good day. And I try to, you know, emulate that to not only my students, but my athletes. Um, so that's certainly something, you know, you have a control over that. Um, I'm, I'm a big advocate of having fun. You know, this is a it's a small part of life. You know, it's high school sports. It, it, it's not uh, the end all. So you should be having fun doing this. You know, this is some of the some of the some of the moments that you're going to look back on and uh, how quick time flies. It's crazy. But um yeah, you're going to look back on it and hopefully these are some some good memories and, 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 and some times that you had fun. So as long as you do those things, you know, you, you go about it with a positive attitude, you have a little bit of fun uh, and you play hard, you know, then, then those are things that, uh, you know, I want them to learn from me. I mean, I know one thing that's fun is when you have everyone in Quaker country come out to the cab and fill it up for a Tuesday or a Friday night. So, Coach, to put a bow on this whole thing, let's uh, let's shout out to the community. Give a little bit of shameless self-promotion for this team. Let that community know why they need to come out and support this boys' basketball team this year. Yeah, I tell you what, it's, there is nothing better if you come out to the, to the, to the cabas here in Salem and, and see the crazies behind our bench going, going nuts. I think we have one of the best student sections uh, in the area. You know, you look back at some of the games we had last year down the stretch here at our place. Um, it's just an unbelievable atmosphere. You know, high school basketball, it's a little bit a little bit more up close and personal than, say, football and some of those other sports. And and I think our, our not only our, our school, school, but our community does a great job and and getting behind us and supporting us. So, you know, looking forward to that uh, in the next coming you know few months. And, and uh, you know, hopefully we'll we'll uh, give them a, a performance that they could be proud of.
We're always proud to say that the Quakers are part of the YSN banner coach, and we are excited to continue our coverage of Salem boys basketball in the 2022-23 season. Don't forget, you can catch some Salem boys basketball games completely free on YSNlive.com this regular season, thanks in part to our wonderful sponsors. This has been another edition of Coach's Corner, first one of the year with Jeff Andres from Salem boys basketball. Thanks, Ty.